When Google announced its Pixel phones at its October 9th event, it placed an emphasis on AI plus software plus hardware. But notice how hardware came at the end there. The Google Pixel 3 XL has excellent AI capabilities that you can't find on any other phone. It has a fluid software experience that elevates the camera to be one of the best, but its hardware falls short of its $900 price tag. This is the Google Pixel 3 XL, and here's our review. Starting with the back, the biggest difference from the 2XL, which is here on the left, versus the 3XL is the use of all glass. Now, it's actually kind of hard to tell, and what Google has done is kind of impressive. Uh, this was a matte uh, metal texture along with a glass texture for that two-tone design, which sort of, you know, fit really well. So they still went with a two-tone design here, except the material is now all glass. But when you touch it, you wouldn't really be able to tell. Also, when you look at it, because it still has that matte, almost uh, similar style. So you have a matte sort of style. It doesn't really feel like glass, but it still feels a little more premium than the design of the 2XL. Over at the top, you can see that's still more glossy and you can tell it sort of attracts fingerprints a little more. But what we really like about this is one of the first few phones that we've seen where you really don't get the smudges of fingerprints on the back, unlike with many glass phones. There is, however, some uh, some markings and some smudges that you can see that we've tried to rub out, but it hasn't sort of uh, happened yet, but we'll be trying to clean a bit of that out. But it does tend to sort of grab some of those markings and we're not sure how or why, whether that's because we put it in a case. Uh, speaking of cases, uh, don't expect your Pixel 2 XL cases to work with the Pixel 3 XL, um, especially if you're, uh, if you're planning on upgrading. This is a 2 XL case, and if you put it inside, you can see that the camera cutout is actually kind of blocking it because the, 2 X, the 3 XL is slightly taller than in the predecessors. Google has moved the SIM card slot to the bottom next to the USB-C charging port. The buttons are all in the same spots. Right here is the power button. There's a white color option and a not pink color option, which is basically pink. Uh, they come with colored power buttons and we're a little sad to see that the black color option didn't come with any flare like that. And then we turn our attention to the screen. It's a 6.3 inch Quad HD Plus resolution, but the one thing that everyone's been talking about is that god awful notch on the front. Some people might not care about it, others think it's just way too big, way too thick that cuts into the display. Uh, we're more in the latter camp. Uh, we think it is a bit distracting. It's quite ugly, it cuts into the display quite a bit, and it is very noticeable when you use all sorts of apps. It just takes up a lot of space and you can see that the system tray is being used there, but at the same time, it just feels like if they had maybe made it slightly longer, at least sort of like the iPhone XS, then perhaps it, you'd still get a little more screen real estate if they just didn't cut into the display as much as it does currently. Uh, there are some alternatives if you really hate that notch. Uh, we don't hate it so much that we would want to stop using the phone, um, but definitely know that that might be a concern for some people. Uh, the first option is to buy the Pixel 3, which doesn't have a notch. So you're getting thicker bezels on that one, so you don't really have to worry about that design uh, conflicting with your screen. Um, but there are two other options. So first is in the developer settings of the phone. You have to turn it on by going into system, about phone, uh, and tapping on build number a couple times. But when you get access to those developer options, you can scroll down and look for display cutout and you can tap on hide. Now, we don't recommend this because yes, you're getting your bezels in and you're hiding the notch pretty well. Uh, it actually looks not that bad to be honest, kind of more similar to the Pixel 2 XL. However, you're losing that screen real estate that you otherwise would have. So. Uh, we don't think that's the best option. We think the best option is, let's go ahead and turn that back off. The best option is this third-party app called Nacho Notch, and you can find it for free on the Google Play Store. It adds a quick settings tile that you can just customize to your liking, and you can say hide notch, and you can see that your notch is still there, or notch is not visible anymore, but you're getting the system tray still in there, and that's an elegant solution. So you're still getting uh, a notch-free experience. 
but you're still getting that valuable screen estate because your system tray hasn't moved lower, so you're getting all that important vital uh, notifications, clock, battery, all that information still up there, and it looks a little more elegant, and you can use it with all the notch, uh, with all the different types of apps. The only downside is that it does not work on the lock screen, so whenever you look at the lock screen, you're still gonna get that notch. But again, if you hate the notch that much, you should really reconsider whether you need to buy this phone, and you should probably go for the Pixel 3, the smaller one, but uh, we don't think it's, as much of a problem in, in that it should detract you from really buying this phone. It doesn't look great, but we like, like this phone more for its software and AI capabilities, and that's what we're gonna talk about next. So not only do you have to deal with that notch, but there's also a chin, a bit of a bottom bezel. Uh, it doesn't really give you that full screen experience, but uh, you know that's sort of what you get with this design, uh, especially because Google has tried to fit in front-facing stereo speakers, which we really appreciate because it does improve uh, sound when you're playing a video and it's blasting audio at your face rather than some phones that have bottom firing speakers where the speaker pushes the volume sort of away from your face. Uh, that being said, we do think Google could have tried to push that bottom bezel down a little bit, especially if it's going to go for such a big notch at the top. That being said, the audio quality for the speakers is pretty impressive. They get 40% louder. We're gonna do a quick test here to compare with the Pixel 2 XL to see the difference. This first one is the Pixel 2 XL. So it sounds a bit tinny. Uh, it sounds not too great, to be honest. So it's a bit more uh, richer, I'd say, and it's definitely louder. Uh, it's just more pleasant to listen to. Uh, I'd say it's, you know, not on the equivalent scale of say a Bluetooth speaker, but you know, it's getting up there, I'd say. Uh, it's a pretty great speaker to listen to music on your phone uh, if you don't have a Bluetooth speaker, and it's excellent for when you're watching videos or movies. One of those benefits of having glass, I mean, yes, it's gonna affect durability a little bit, but the benefit is you get wireless charging now on the Pixel 3 XL, so you can place it on a Qi wireless charger and get uh, wireless charging. Uh, this is actually the Google Pixel Stand. It's a $79 accessory that Google is selling. It's got a USB-C cable that goes out to another USB-C port into the adapter, and it works similarly to other uh, wireless chargers, but it does a lot more than just charge your phone. For example, you can immediately see that the Pixel Stand has allowed the screen to sort of do something differently. Uh, you can get quick access to Google Assistant, so you can also say, hey Google, and activate it that way, but now you have this default way of in the always on screen. You can either tap on my day to get like a rundown of the weather calendar, your commute, and start playing news, or you can dive into the Explore tab of Google Assistant, or you can just tap on that to sort of ask Google Assistant a question, and you can see it looks different, like uh, let's say, what's the weather? Currently in New York City, it's 61 and sunny. Today, there will be scattered showers with a forecasted high of 61 and a low of 49. And of course, you can customize these settings. So if this is by your bedside table, you can head over to uh, your connected devices. And the way it actually connects is interesting. It's a hashing technique. So essentially, uh, as soon as you place this uh, onto the Pixel Stand for the first time, there's a trend crypto handshake that happens and essentially that this device remembers the settings for this Pixel Stand. Uh, and so if you have an extra one, you can configure it to do different things. For example, if you go into those Pixel Stand settings, uh, by the way, it's not using Bluetooth or wireless or, or anything tech, anything like that. It's, it's just sort of just place it on it and you don't need to do anything. It'll automatically be added into your uh, connected devices list. And you can see a couple of settings here. Uh, screen off when dark is especially useful if you wanna make sure there's nothing going on when you're about to sleep so you're not disturbed. You can also have it automatically turn on do not disturb mode when you're docked it so that you won't get any notifications. This is again, especially handy if it's by your bedside. Uh, alternatively, you can have a photo frame and if you set that up, you can actually use Google Photos to select albums and uh, sort of have them display on your screen uh, as a way of turning your phone into sort of a digital phone screen display. You can just choose an album, it'll start playing 
uh, that's probably a better option if your wireless charger is out in your living room, for example. Sunri Sunrise Alarm is a bit more interesting. It basically turns your screen's colors a little more uh, yellowy, red, and orangey to simulate that sunlight hitting your face as soon as 15 minutes before your alarm. So you can customize the times for when you want it to happen. And more or less, it's just a way to give you that bright light to simulate a sense of, yep, you're, you're waking up in the morning, the sun's coming up, time to get ready for the morning. So that's the Pixel Stand. It does a lot more than an average wireless charger. Uh, it gives you faster access to Google Assistant. Uh, and of course, gives you those benefits of keeping your phone on do not disturb mode at $79. And also what's more interesting is that Google has now also including uh, USB-C earbuds in the box. So you don't have to pay extra for these at all when you buy the Pixel 3 XL. Now you might remember that Google came out with Pixel Buds. These weren't really well received, mostly because uh, they, they did sound fine and they had really good uh, controls to access Google Assistant, but the problems more or less stemmed from how you had to put the Pixel Buds in the case. They're, they're not true wireless also, they're wired, uh, so it was tricky, you know, rolling it every time you wanted to put it back. And also there were a lot of pairing and connectivity issues that we ran into. So we didn't really recommend them, but Google has sort of implemented some of its uh, best features into these USB-C buds. So you, you, there's no touch uh, controls over here. However, there is a little button right here that you, ac you can access. Press and hold this black button to talk to Google Assistant, and you can press and hold the top button over here. It's kind of hard to see that it's a button, but you can see it, it is. You can increase the volume like that or decrease it like that. But if you press and hold this, basically you can hear Have Assistant read out your notifications uh, and also Assistant will read out your notifications as you get anything. So when you're listening to music, it'll say something like Slack or Gmail and you can press and hold this to have it read out what the notification is if you want to act on it. Sadly, unlike the Pixel Buds, you can't actually respond back to messages or anything like that. You can only just listen to things. And unlike the Pixel Buds, you also can't use that handy translation feature where you can try to get uh, someone to translate into your phone to hear what they're saying in English or whatever language you speak in. Uh, well, the good thing about these is they are also sold separately on the Google Store, so you can plug them into a phone like the Galaxy Note 9 and still use it to listen to music, and you can even use the button to access Google Assistant on the phone. However, it's not as well integrated as using it with the Google Pixel 3 XL. So it's a 6.3 inch OLED screen. It uh, looks absolutely great. It doesn't have any of those issues that we saw with the Pixel 2 XL, which suffered from some blue screen issues and quality control issues. Uh, it's a great looking screen. It's well saturated. Of course, uh, if you don't like how saturated it is, you can go into the phone's display settings and there are some options so you can tweak the coloring if, if it's too much, uh, too colorful to your liking. Uh, but in general, you know, it's OLED, so those blacks look really good. Uh, they sort of may help fade away the notch if you're using uh, OLED apps that sort of mask it as much as possible. And in general, uh, the, the screen looks absolutely great to watch videos on. Uh, that is if you don't really mind also having that notch in the display. Uh, performance wise, it's running the Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 processor with four gigs of RAM and we've yet to run into any issues with performance. Uh, games l run really smooth, apps open really quickly, and everything throughout, moving throughout the entire operating system just feels fluid in general. But there are some software features that you can't find anywhere else other than the Pixel series. For example, Now Playing was one of our favorites that debuted on the Pixel 2, makes its return on the Pixel 3 XL, basically uses on-device machine learning, so it's not listening uh, and sharing anything into the cloud, it's completely on-device. Uh, more or less, it listens to your music and your surroundings. So if you're in a restaurant, coffee shop, and you hear a song, you really like it, you wanna know what it is, but before you actively need to do anything, the Pixel 3 will tell you what's playing. What's neat is that Google has sort of improved on now playing in a way. Now you can actually go into the settings and you can get a history of what was playing uh, as well as a location. And so now you don't need to take notes or you know try to write down what songs were. You can actually see a visual history of everything that now playing is identified. Another neat feature we really like is shush mode. Basically all you need to do, you have to actually turn this on in the settings when you set up your phone first. But what you need to do 
to uh, stop notifications from buzzing your phone or just bothering you when you're trying to get some work done is just flip the phone this way and all notifications now do not disturb is turned on so you, you won't hear any vibrations or sounds and you can always feel it turn back on. You can see that little switch happen and then you also get a little vibration alert to sort of let you know that do not disturb mode is automatically turned off. It's a little handy feature that we think is uh, just a nice little touch. One of the other features coming to the Pixel 3 XL is Smart Compose from Gmail. This is available on the web version, but it's gonna be exclusively appearing on the Pixel 3 uh, in the mobile Gmail version. And we assume it'll roll out to other Android devices and iOS devices at some point. But more or less, what it does is help you finish your sentences. So for example, if I'm saying something like, my name is Julian and my phone number is, and you can see that it, tried to uh, finish that sentence for me. So all I need to do is swipe and it finished that is. So more or less if I asked it to show my address or I said my address is, it'll sort of try and fill in that information out. I don't want to try that because I don't know when, I don't want anyone to know my address. So you understand, but essentially it's a neat feature that it you can turn on in Gmail settings. Uh, sadly, it doesn't really work with exchange accounts or anything like that. So. Uh, you're only restricted to using in Gmail your Google account. You can still squeeze the phone to access Google Assistant. And speaking of Google Assistant, you'll be able to use Google's duplex technology that it unveiled earlier this year at Google I.O. Basically, it's using AI to uh, handle tasks for you uh, through the phone. So for example, I could ask things like, book a table for me tomorrow at 7 p.m. at The Modern. So you can see right now that it's using OpenTable, but basically Google's duplex technology is for when it can't use OpenTable or something like that is Google Assistant will go ahead and call the restaurant and use that detailed information. It'll ask you things like, would this window of time be okay? And for how many people? And it'll basically place an actual call and the, and the restaurant will be talking to an AI. Of course, Google Assistant will let itself know that it's being uh, used as a service. It's an assistant, not a human person. And the restaurant will be able to, okay, confirm that time. And then Google Assistant will get back to you and say, that has been confirmed. So all you ever really need to do is just feed it that initial information and it does the rest of the work for you. And they should, they said that it should also be, be coming open to salons, not just restaurants, but it's gonna start in select cities like New York first. So that's an exciting feature that we can't really test right now, but Duplex will be available for the Pixel 3 later this year. But one of the coolest features and one we think is really game-changing and really a worthwhile reason to consider the Pixel 3 is Google's call screening feature. This feature basically eliminates robocalls in some way. Uh, basically, it makes them more manageable. What it does is when you get a call, any call, you're able to screen the call if it's a number that you don't really recognize, just in case you don't want to pick up. And the benefit is that it will transcribe what the person is saying in real time, uh, and the AI will talk for you, and you'll be able to, in that brief couple seconds, be able to tell if this is a robocall or if it's a genuine person, and then you can quickly pick up, or if it is a robocall, you can just press spam and mark it as such, and that will sort of help prevent that number being called uh, to you again. Uh, it's a great feature, it's handy. We've already used it when we've encountered a couple of robocalls, and it's something I think that is definitely a worthwhile uh, addition to owning a Pixel phone because it's not only gonna be available for the Pixel 3, but it's actually gonna be available for the Pixel 2 and 1 in November. Here's a demo of that call screening action. So for example, you can see that this is just a normal call. Of course, this is someone I know. Here's that screen call option. Now I can press that. Hi, the person you're calling is using a screening service from Google and will get a copy of this conversation. Go ahead and say why you're calling. Hi, I would like to speak with Julian. My name is Batman and I have a package for him. So you can see the transcription service is pretty good. Uh, it does make, mess up a few things. It's actually, uh, the other phone is over here and it's recording what I'm saying right now. But initially you can see that I, I knew that this was a normal person and not a robocall. Uh, and of course I can either say, tell me more. It's clear, go ahead and say more about why you're calling. I have a big package for you. It contains the body of someone close to you. Do you need to get a hold of them urgently? I believe, yes. They can't talk right now, but try calling them back later. 
Thanks and goodbye. So it's a pretty great way of screening your calls, especially if it's people you don't want to interact with, namely robocalls. But as you can see, you can almost use it for anything. Uh, so if it's uh, a number you do recognize, I mean, we don't really recommend you using something like this for people you actually know, uh, but it's a great way to avoid robocalls and mark them as spam and uh, prevent hopefully future robocalls. But one of the best reasons to own a Google Pixel 3 XL is software updates. Basically, you're gonna get fast version and security updates from Google uh, consistently and timely in a way that you really can't find on many other phones. Uh, the list has grown a little bit, but for example, we're on Android Pie, the latest version of Android, whereas this is the Galaxy Note 9, which is stuck on Android 8.1 Oreo. Uh, hopefully Samsung will bring Pi at some point end of this year or early next year. However, with the Pixel 3, you're always gonna be able to get those updates right when Google pushes them out. And only a handful of other phones, uh, potentially just two actually can say that, uh, that it can do the same. Google Pixel 2 was one of the best camera phones we've ever tested, and it was recognized for that throughout the industry. And with the Google Pixel 3, Google is sticking with the single lens design, whereas everyone else is moving to dual lens cameras or even three le lens cameras. Uh, but Google still believes it has the chops to make a great camera with just a single lens. It's a 12.2 megapixel lens with an f1.8 aperture. But over on the front, Google has actually decided to try something new. Uh, partly why there's a notch here is that there's two cameras in the front. There's two 8 megapixel cameras. The main one is an f1.8 aperture and the other one is an f2.2 aperture. The second one is actually a wide angle lens. So we'll show you how it works, but essentially it's meant for groupies where you want to get more people in a shot or if you just want a selfie with more of the landscape around you in the shot. So the megapixel count may be the same, but don't expect the same camera. Uh, there's a new image sensor, so quality should be better overall. And you know, as usual, the camera is quick to operate, fast to open, and you have this new user interface that Google has added, a little more iPhone-like, but also some more improvements, like now you can shoot RAW and JPEG, so you can edit RAW files. And overall, let's go to the settings, and you can see that Google has added support in video options for HEVC format, something that Apple did last year, and uh, built-in support for HEIF in Android 9 Pie. There's that RAW and JPEG option as well. And overall, uh, usability for this camera app is much more fluid and it's much more intuitive than the previous one. And that update should be rolling out to previous Google Pixel phones as well. One of our favorite features is HDR+, which is what the Google camera really relies on to get these excellent shots, especially with high contrast scenarios. So before, you know, Google would, and, and still now, Google would take a lot of photos when you, as soon as you press that shutter button. So as you can see here, you can see all the shots it takes right here in this option. And now you have the option to sort of go around and choose the perfect shot that you want in case the first one didn't look as good. This works best with uh, photos where say you're taking a photo of a kid or someone and they suddenly look away so you think you lost the shot but you can always uh, go into Google Photos and you can swipe up and you can see shots in this photo. It shows you all the shots it took when you slap that power button, that shutter button, shutter button. And you can see it says two recommended shots and that's the AI recognizing, hey, we, we can actually find two better shots here. Uh, and, and you can see that it shows two other shots and you can choose what you want. There is a downside, however. Uh, the downside is that you're not getting the full resolution as the original shot when you tap that shutter button. So for example, if you look at the resolution here, it's 2048 by 1536, as opposed to uh, this shot, which is a 4032 by 3024. So your resolution is gonna be a little lower. It's not gonna look as crisp as your original photo, but if it means that you, uh, you know, missed taking a shot, I believe that's what happened in this one. Uh, we ended up choosing the lower res photo, which looked better because the person was looking at the camera as opposed to looking elsewhere when we tapped that shutter button. There's a new feature called Super Res Zoom, and essentially it's kind of like that joke you see in those CSI shows where they say enhance and they just keep enhancing on this image and it looks surprisingly sharp sometimes or it looks terrible. Well, Google is using AI to actually make enhance a reality. So now there's this zoom option, you know, and usually when you digitally zoom, uh, you think, oh, that's probably not the worst way to take a photo because you're getting a cropped image and it's just gonna look terrible as opposed to using telephoto zoom on 
uh, phones that have dual cameras with telephoto options like the iPhone XS. However, Google's using AI to reduce noise and deliver more brightness so that photos you take when zooming in still look you know, they're not going to look as good as photos without zooming in, but they still look surprisingly good compared to phones that don't do uh, any kind of any kind of uh, processing to that final zoomed in photo. So this looks relatively crisp for zooming in all the way on a uh, complete digital zoom shot. We have a couple more comparisons over here. Uh, this, These were all zoomed in photos from different cameras. For example, this is the iPhone XS Max. You know, it doesn't look too bad, but zoom in and you can see there's a lot more grain in this shot over here. And when we take a look at this one, this is the Google Pixel 2 XL, I believe. Yep. And you can see this one actually does a pretty good job. There's not as much grain as the iPhone one, uh, but details may not be as sharp as this one. But then you go to the Galaxy Note 9 and it does a pretty decent job, but it, the, the sign over here is a little fuzzy. It's not as sharp as the other two photos. And finally, the Google Pixel 3a XL, which does a pretty good job of making sure that sign is sharp. Uh, you can see there's a little fuzziness around here, but you can still read everything. There's not as much grain as the iPhone shot. And it overall does a pretty good job of making it the photo we'd probably share the most. Though we do say the iPhone does uh, do a pretty decent job as well. But overall, I think Pixel 3 XL in this particular instance is the photo we'd share uh, for Super Res Zoom. There's also going to be a feature coming later called Night Sight, and essentially it's going to use AI to fill in colors and uh, brightness for super dark scenes. Uh, it's going to be a separate mode, we believe. We're not sure yet because we can't try it out because it's not available, but it will be coming not just to the Pixel 3, but to the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 1 as well. Portrait mode looks just as good as ever. Uh, it's doing a, still a good job of finding the cutouts around the subject and delivering a really nice strong blur. Uh, really great job at preserving a lot of those details on the subject's face, something that is sorely missing on some other phones that do portrait mode. For example, the Galaxy Note 9, which is the one that we liked the least. Uh, we did like the Apple uh, iPhone XS Max's portrait mode. Uh, does not capture the, this, as much details as the Pixel does, especially around the hair. Uh, but the iPhone also has a different approach to applying that blur. They try to make it a little more natural to what DSLRs do. That's why you'll see a little more blur happening towards the top and different planes like the edges as opposed to the pixel which keeps the entire plane of the subject in focus. And overall comparing it to the Pixel uh, 2 XL, I think there definitely is an improvement. Photos are a little more brighter, uh, a little more saturated I'd say overall, uh, not just in portrait mode but um, it's definitely more accurate and there is a stronger blur that's applied with uh, portrait mode photos on the Pixel 3 XL. The front facing camera is a winner again. You can see that this is sort of a low light shot, still manages to preserve a lot of details and you can see that it's a little fuzzy but you get still all the details, a lot of color in there and it does a decent job with managing the lights in the background and also still looks, manages to look great with that portrait mode. A lot of the detail is still preserved and definitely uh, one of the best in terms of comparing it to something like say the uh, Galaxy Note 9 shot, which is the portrait mode shot from the Galaxy Note 9, which is uh, fuzzy and overall not as detailed and sharp with a nice blur as much as the Pixel 3 XL. And the iPhone does a better job than the Note 9, but it's still not as well of a job as the Pixel, Pixel because you can see it's a little fuzzy all over. Not as much detail carried over, though it looks a lot more natural and has a nice strong blur in portrait mode and manages to capture a lot of that detail still as well. And it can also be used for two people. Like here, uh, this is actually a standard shot, but this is what you get with the wide angle shot. You can see there's some distortion around the corners uh, because of that wide angle lens, but this is the difference between the normal shot and the wide angle lens. And again, you can use portrait mode and it actually manages to get both subjects uh, in that shot completely blur free and blurs everything else around them. It's not the most realistic type of scenario. You're not gonna really get that with a DSLR unless you broaden that focal length a little more, but uh, it's a pretty good job here and uh, it looks great. 
and interacting with the wide angle lens is actually pretty seamless. There's no direct immediate option when you swap over to the front facing lens, but you can see the same magnification icon that you can see with super res zoom on the other camera, and you can still zoom in if you want, and that's just uh, actually just digitally zooming, and or you can swap to the other camera, and it's pretty seamless. You can see that swap happening though, but this is the wider angle lens. You can see it looks a little distorted towards the bottom, but it's just a quick sliding down to swap to that second camera and you can get way more in a shot. There's a couple other little nuggets hidden in the motor section, like Google Lens. We think Google Lens should really be integrated in the camera so that it just proactively tells you uh, things that you might want to learn more because it feels like no one's going to use it if it's hidden here. But Google Lens is still pretty impressive at how accurate it can be. For example, you can pull up a business card and you can register uh, something is there. When you tap that, you can see that it pulled the text from the business card and it gives you all these options like calling that person, texting, emailing, visiting the website, Site. and uh, overall it did a lot and it just we feel like it's a little too hidden for a lot of people to really utilize but also in that more section is playground which is essentially AR stickers from pixel 2 and pixel 1 uh, it's augmented reality uh, there's a couple of neat little uh, tie-ins to Marvel for example you can pull up Iron Man and he shows up and you can resize him you can move him around to get him to animate place him in different areas and take photos with him. It looks pretty good. Uh, it's just something that we don't think a lot of people will really use. Again, mostly because it's hidden all the way over here. And uh, one of our favorite features, however, uh, and again, we really wish Google had made it more present in the main area, is Photo Booth. Uh, more or less, last year, Google announced this product called Clips. And so what Clips did was you would place it somewhere and it would automatically identify important and key moments that you would want to capture. Say if you left it in front of your child and your child did something really cute or fun, uh, Google Clips would be like, oh, that, I need to capture that moment. So it captures that moment and sends it to your Google Photos. Uh, sadly, it was just you know weird. It was too unnecessary because you had it was a separate product. You had to cap or carry around and clip onto places and it just didn't work as well as you would think which is why Google seems to have integrated now basically the functionality of what Google Clips provided into Photo Booth, which is a new feature in Google Pixel 3. Basically, when you turn it on, you can see this little button, press it, and you can see this little white bar, so it's trying to recognize scenes that I might want a picture taken. So, for example, if I make a smile or... It's kind of hard to tell when it really is going to decide whether it wants to take a photo. Maybe it thinks right now this is not too interesting, but if I smile, it takes a photo. So it's a fun to play around with when you have someone else and you're doing some fun interactions or... Again, it's really hard to get to... There we go. It's really hard to get it to work, but it's fun and it's uh, something that I think we think a lot of people might really like if we're with, at a party with friends and you're trying to get a bunch of photos taken and all of those photos can be accessible again in your photos. And they look pretty good. Uh, of course, you know, it's the same exact camera being used, no reduction in file size or anything. Else. It's just a different mode to capture funner moments. And another feature in video is autofocus tracking. So essentially all you need to do is tap on an object and as it moves around, like if it's a child playing or a dog running around, the focus will try to stay on that object. Though we do see that it sometimes just disappears, so you have to just tap the subject again. But overall, it does a pretty good job of maintaining the focus on that subject as it runs around. Overall, we're really impressed with the camera on the Pixel 3 XL. We can tell that it is a little more saturated than we've experienced previously on the Pixel 2, but you still get great detail, especially with low light scenarios and tons of impressive moments with portrait mode that captures moments that we definitely want to share over other phones. Apart from the notch, one of our biggest disappointments with the Pixel 3 XL is that Google didn't try to fit in a bigger battery. In fact, it's a slightly smaller battery than the Google Pixel 2 XL. It's a 34, 30 milliamp hour battery pack inside. And we don't really see why Google didn't try to fit something bigger because battery life on the Pixel 3 XL is about average, if maybe a little less than average. Uh, we consistently had to charge the phone towards the end of the day uh, on high usage especially. With average use, we ended up getting around six hours of screen on time and we only received 20% by 10.30 p.m. or so. But generally with high usage, when we tried to 
get the most out of our device, we ended up having to charge it midday or around 3 p.m. Uh, and if you're expecting to get a lot of use out of this phone, you definitely are gonna have to charge it at some point in the middle of the day. That being said, Google has one of the more accurate ways of delivering notifications about when your battery will die. Uh, usually on other phones, those battery estimate lifetimes seem to be way off. Uh, sometimes when we get 20%, it'll say, you still have 10 hours of use on this phone, which doesn't make any sense, but the Pixel 3 XL genuinely seems to provide accurate numbers as to when the battery will be expected to die. The Google Pixel 3 XL costs $900. That's a lot of money, but you have to think about it more from a software perspective than a hardware perspective. No, you're not getting the best build quality you can from a smartphone, and you do have to live with that notch on the front. But you're getting a rich software experience with AI features you can't find anywhere else. That also includes fast version and security updates. You also get the benefit of having one of the best camera phones available on the market. We think that all of that makes it worth it. And of course, if you can't live with the notch, you can always get the smaller and cheaper Google Pixel 3, which has chunkier bezels, but no notch. The Google Pixel 3 XL goes on sale starting October 18th.